If I were to paint a fairy tale city bathed in sunlight, blend contradictions, styles, artistic forms, amble along narrow paved streets enclosed by aristocratic homes of a bygone era, ornate balconies, railings crafted with artistry, smell the scent of flowers, see gentle lady folk watering their potted plants, knock on doors with golden door knockers. Go inside and be enthralled by the exquisite artwork on the ceilings. Wander through streets named after saints, heroes, benefactors. Stand indecisively at crossroads that promise unique experiences for the rambler. Shake the hand of gentle, laughing, hospitable folk. Hear a medley of dialects. Relax in coffee shops, sample exquisite food in tavernas. I would go to the old city of Xanthi, which nestles at the foothills of the mountain range of pomegranates, where King Diomedes' horses may still be galloping on its slopes. And there, in the forests that surround it, that still reverberate with primeval echoes, listen to Orpheus singing to the music of his lyre. Όμορφα τραγούδι, κοριτσάκι μου. Πού το βρήκε, Σ' αρέσει, παππού. Μου το έστειλε η πόλη. Α, η Ξάνθη, η παλιά πόλη. Μ, έτσι θα είναι. Διότι έπρεπε εκείνη να σου το στείλει. Και τι μου θύμισε τώρα, κορίτσι μου. Μια δασκάλα του πιάνου στα παλιά, παλιά χρόνια. 
που είχε πάρα πολλά παιδιά που μάθαιναν πια. Και είχε και μαθητή τον Μάνο το Χατζηδάκη που εκείνος χτύπησε τα πρώτα πνίκτρα στο πιάνο της. Από την κυρία αυτή, την Αμπένσα την Αντωνιά. Πολύ ωραία. Για να δω, τι είναι αυτές οι φωτογραφίες που κοιτάζεις. Είναι η παλιά πόλη της Ξάνθης, πολλά χρόνια πριν. Στις αρχές του περασμένου αιώνα. Αυτές εδώ οι φωτογραφίες δημιουργούν ένα παραμύθι. Εδώ μεγάλωσε ένα πολύ μικρό κομματάκι κορίτσι. Το έγραψα κι εγώ. Όταν ήμουν σαν και σένα. Μίλησέ μου για την Ξάνθη, παππού. Πες μου την ιστορία της παλιάς πόλης. Σου μιλάω για μια πόλη πανέμορφη που δεν είχε τίποτα μα τίποτα να ζηλέψει και από τις πιο φημισμένες πόλεις του κόσμου. Ξάνθη, the city of a thousand colors. Its history is lost in the mists of time. It got its name from a beautiful Amazon or from one of Uranus' daughters. The Ottomans called it Iskidzi. From the depths of primeval time came the legends surrounding Orpheus, who enraptured with his lyre. This is where Hercules came to capture the man-eating mares of King Diomedes. On the slopes of Rodopi, Dionysus and the Maenads held the Bacchanalia, or Dionysian celebrations. Archaeological remains bear witness to the passage of Romans, Crusaders, Byzantines. At the end of the 14th century, the Ottoman occupation began. In October 1919, Xanthi was liberated. In the two world wars, however, the Bulgarians extended their dominion to include the city. From the spring of 1945, Xanthi was safely in the arms of Mother Greece, and its history follows. In 1829, powerful earthquakes flattened Xanthi. The old town, however, is rebuilt with love and artistry. The rich tobacco merchants enhance it with superb mansions in a matching of different architectural styles. The city lacked for nothing embassies, consulates, cinema houses, cars, schools, a girls' school with teachers from Constantinople. It was pulsating with life and activity. The tobacco trade was becoming a route to culture and wealth. Beautiful women, aristocratic, dressed in silk, the organza, traversed the paved roads of the city on their way to the Capelludes, the famous dressmakers, to leaf through fashion magazines. There were many festivities, soirees, where being the belle of the ball was the aspiration of every woman. Today, as in the past, the life of the city of Xanthi is to be found in its neighborhoods. The children play safely in its narrow alleyways. The ladies embroider memories with silk thread in flowery gardens. Always hospitable, they offer a syrup-covered sweet and vanilla submerged in water to their guests. The visitor will wander through the narrow streets and admire the highly crafted aristocratic homes. Taste the colors of art. Meet artists and hagiographers. Choose souvenirs in the antique shops of the city. Reminders of another era. Drink ouzo in traditional haunts coffee in modern cafeterias, light a candle in the old churches. The aroma of freshly baked bread hangs in the air, mixed with the fragrance of flowers. The melodic sounds of a piano leap through the open windows of the houses of the old city. Green everywhere, on the mountains all around, in the city, the eye is transfixed. The soul finds serenity. The hospitable, smiling people shake your hand, chat with you, talk with pride about the place where they live, which is one of its kind in Greece. 
And when the moon casts golden shards of light onto the river Kosinthos, which divides the city in two, colors, emotions, perspectives change. The city is out to have fun, as in the old days. An influx of people every evening. It doesn't have to be a holiday or a feast day. Aristocratic homes renovated with zeal and imagination. Transformed into modern bars, colorful tavernas with painted walls. The coziness of wood and stone. A haunt for the bon viveur. Drink, music, delicious hors d'oeuvres, sweets. Πέρασε τόσα πολλά αυτή η πόλη, παιδί μου. Αλλά δεν γονάτισε. Όσοι ήρθαν να κατοικήσουν εδώ, την αγάπησαν. Τη στόλησαν με σπίτια περίτεχνα, όπως της πρέπει. Κοίτα. Mm, τι όμορφο που είναι. Και αυτό, και αυτό. Λες και το κάθε σπίτι έχει να μου πει μια μαγική ιστορία. Πολύ σωστά. Γιατί οι Ξάνθοι κτίζονταν από πολύ παλιά. Οι Ξανθιώτες έκτισαν σπίτια μοναδικά, ξεχωριστά. Διάλεξαν την πέτρα, το ξύλο και το σφυριλατημένο σίδερο. Α, κοίτα τι όμορφα που είναι ντυμένες, σαν τη γυναίκα της φωτογραφίας εκεί. Από την παλιά πόλη έσφιζε από ζωή. Οι κάτοικοι ήταν εύκολοι γιατί εμπορεύονταν το μπασμά, το πιο φημισμένο καπνό του κόσμου. Και οι μοδίστρε, οι μοδίστρε έκαναν χρυσέ δουλειέ. Γιατί οι αρχόντισε ήθελαν να είναι καλοτιμένε. Ξέρω, μετάξι και οργάντζα όπω τα παραμύθια. σπίτια, για τους ανθρώπους, για τους πλούσιους, για το πασμά. Έλα να δεις, να σου πω για το μαγικό φυτό που έφερε πλούτο και φήμη στην Ξάνθη. From the end of the 17th century, and even more so at the beginning of the 18th, Xanthian tobacco, Basmas, was renowned throughout the world. Trade in tobacco was a major source of revenue. The court of the Sultan always bought their tobacco from Xanthi. They say the tobacco fields hold a mystery. The sun, the humidity, the poor soil, the limestone rocks, the slow fermentation. Secrets behind the creation of the uniquely flavored and aromatic tobacco, the Basmas. Numerous tobacco warehouses still survive today, evidence of the economic boom of the city. Τα λένε τόγκια. Και αυτά τα μικρά τογκάδια. Α, πως θα ξέρεις πονηρούλα μου περισσότερα κι από μένα. Δεν μπορούσα να φανταστώ ότι αυτά τα ξερά φύλλα θα χάριζαν τόση δύναμη στην πόλη. Την έκαναν πασίγουνο στις τα πέρατα του κόσμου. Και μετά και μετά τι έγινε, πως συνεχίζεται η ιστορία μας. Για να γνωρίσεις την παλιά πόλη, παιδί μου, πρέπει να την περπατήσεις. Να μυρίσεις τα λουλούδια στους κήπους, να σφίξεις το χέρι των κατοίκων, να χτυπήσεις πόρτες σπιτιών, να δεις πως ζουν οι άνθρωποι. Έλα, πάμε και θα σου τα πω στο δρόμο.
city of Xanthi has retained its distinctive color, culture, history, captivating the visitor. From 1830 after the earthquakes of 1829, reconstruction began. The city is built with a mixture of different architectural features in an unusual merging with tradition. Craftsmen from northern Thrace, Macedonia, worked with the locals, builders, painters, stonecutters, sculptors, ironmongers, potters, carpenters, all combining their crafts to produce this extraordinary result. It was here the Kudare came, master craftsmen from Epirus, who left their mark on the facades of the houses with their Kudaritika, stone-carved emblems. The old city, an open-air museum, redolent of color and fragrance. A three-dimensional painting. A stroll through the narrow streets will seduce with the singularity and variety of the buildings. Roman quarters, simple dwellings, lodgings. Imposing buildings with Ottoman neoclassical features. Houses with Eastern Sachnisia or upper floor projections. Aristocratic homes reminiscent of Italian Renaissance, German Romanticism, with the tiered edges of the walls, the Central European Art Deco. Where to start? There is so much to see and admire. Papu, look at this tree. Why are these trees so beautiful? Because the road is so steep. Γι' αυτό κόβαν τις γωνίες στον δρόμο για να μπορούν να κυκλοφορούν τα κάρα και τα αυτοκίνητα. Όλα τα σπίτια είναι έτσι. Αυτό εδώ το κομμάτι όπως είναι, μονάχα στους δρόμους που ήταν στενοί, στις γωνίες κόβαν, όχι παντού. Αυτό εδώ το κόψιμο του τοίχου το λένε φαλτσογωνία. In the Metropolitan Church Quarter, we will come across the Thrakiotika. Houses with an arched gable and a round Sachnissi. On Eleftherios Venizelo Street, we view the Epirate mansions. Built about 1870, inns and shops. Various styles follow, crafted by Epirot masters, who knew how to work the local granite. A special skill to be able to work the stone that fronted the aristocratic homes. Stone shops were built with local grey granite, the Granovioriti taken from the bed of the Kosinthos River. The Makedonika, large working-class buildings with impressive Sachnisia or upper floor projections, reminiscent of the old Ottoman lodgings. The visitor should observe the art gallery, an exceptional example of Western Macedonian and Epirot construction. The mix of styles created neat structures of refined architecture with romantic adornments, such as the aristocratic home with pinkish bricks, which today houses the town hall. Another representative example is the folk museum of the Kuyumzoglu family, with decorative features based on the use of red brick. The Kaluthi mansion, with its exceptional decorative painting and cast iron railings. Indelible decorative features are found everywhere, on doors, windows, balconies. The eye is transfixed on the brickwork decoration and the host of refined features of the Isaac Daniel mansion. Here, Manos Hadzidaki spent his childhood years and was given his first music lessons by an Armenian teacher. Αυτό το σπίτι μου αρέσει πολύ. Θα ήθελα να κάθομαι στο παράθυρο και να χαζεύω στο δρόμο. Αυτό που εξέχει το λένε σαχνισί. Σαχνισί. Μπα, και τι σημαίνει. Είναι λέξη περσική που σημαίνει ο θόνος του βασιλιά. 
Εδώ οι κυράδε, όταν τελειώνουν τι δουλειέ του, κάθονται να ξεκουραστούν και να χατζέρουν. The working class houses. The dwelling with the biggest Sachnisi, built in 1849, the oldest in the old city. All around houses and mansions of the popular style, with simple materials, lime washed, gardens all around, with an eye for detail everywhere, such as this, with the twin knockers on the street door. Working class dwellings with loggia features and their own distinctive decoration. The neoclassical buildings, such as the mansion belonging to the Dr. Karabetsis. The Metropolitan Mansion, an imposing neoclassical building with neo Renaissance features, built in 1896. For its reconstruction, the tobacco workers each contributed one day's pay. Renovated houses with a modern look, yet carefully preserving tradition and the city's Turkish bars. As visitors stroll through the city, they should observe the Elysia Cinema, one of the few buildings preserved in Greece that has a geometric structure. Art Nouveau and early Art Deco features. In a similar vein is the Karadimoglu mansion. The Apollo Theater is housed here, where it is said Sarah Bernhardt performed. The impressive Ottoman lodgings give unique color to the architecture of the old city. Travelers have the feeling they are in England when they behold the Michalogleika, four dwellings in a row of red brick, built at the beginning of the 20th century by an Epirot tobacco merchant, Ioannis Michaloglu, for his children. The exterior charm of the houses is also reflected in their interior. multi-talented decorators brought their craft from afar and left their stamp everywhere. Finely worked pictures with decorative features inspired by nature. Birds, flowers, branches adorn the ceilings, the alcoves, the balconies, the gables. The artwork of the ceilings are like works in relief as the shadows play with the light or are adorned with huge wreaths of flowers. The city of Xanthi hides yet another surprise for the visitor. Descending towards the Kosinthos, a small, plain dwelling attracts our attention. It is the Pera Mahalas, the Samakov district, on the slope under the Archangeliotisa. Small, plain houses, working class, with an unpredictable layout. Narrow streets that go right into the gardens form steps on the side of the hill. In the grocery stores, the aromas of another era, ouzo, olives, barrel wood. Samakov does not have the glamour of the old city. It stands opposite and charms with its simplicity. Papo, all 
Όλες αυτές οι εκκλησίες είναι κτισμένες από παλιά. Από πολύ παλιά, παιδί μου. Οι ξανθιώτες πρώτα έκαναν το σπίτι του Θεού και μετά το δικό του. Έλα να μπούμε στην εκκλησία. Εσύ θα καθίσεις να ξεκουραστείς και εγώ θα ανάψω ένα κεράκι. Εγώ, σε αυτή την εκκλησία, παντρευτήκα με νίκη μου με τη γιαγιά σου. Τι ήταν όμορφη, νύφη γιαγιά. Στα κτωπούτα. Όμορφη σαν και σένα. Καλώς τον. Καλώς ήρθατε. Εδώ στον ναό του ταξιάρχη, στο Καβάκι, σε έναν από τους παλιούς ναούς της πόλης μας και θέλω να σας ευχηθώ να έχετε την ευχή του ταξιάρχη που εδώ είναι προστάτης και βοηθός. Ελάτε όμως να σας ευλογήσω και με τον αγιασμό γιατί σήμερα είναι και πρωτομηνιά, 1η Σεπτεμβρίου. Να ζήσεις. Να ζήσετε. The mixture of Christian and Muslim religious memorials arouses the interest of the visitor. On the wooded mountains, there are three monasteries. The Virgin of the Archangel, the Virgin of Calamos, and the Monastery of Michael and Gabriel. They hold the city in a protective embrace and keep alive the memory of Byzantium. The devastating earthquake of 1829 raised everything to the ground. The Metropolitan Evgenius, a prominent historical figure, undertook the reconstruction of the ruined churches, which functioned as nuclei, around which the districts of the old city developed. The churches are unpretentious in the three-aisled basilica rhythm because the Ottomans forbade their adornment with impressive domes. The church of Pamehiston Archangels, three-aisled wooden-roofed basilica in the Kavaiki district. It was rebuilt in 1934 on the ruins of the old church. The visitor will observe the wood-carved, gold-engraved shrine decorated with animal and plant motifs the magnificent embroidered icon of the Archangel Michael, a work by a woman from Constantinople, a donation from the tobacco merchant Zgorov in 1839. The unusual Thracian crystal oil lamps. In 1835, the church of Ayos Yorios, a three-aisled basilica with a two-sided sloping roof, is built in the tobacco merchant's district. In the courtyard, a marble tombstone column dedicated to the memory of the Xanthian Ephalia by her Russian tobacco merchant husband. Of a special interest is the neoclassical bell tower, built in 1927. Around 1838, the foundations of the church of Ayos Vlasios were laid. Beloved saint of the Thracians, many churches in the wider region bear his name. The visitor should pay particular attention to its precinct, where the priest's house, the school, remains of the community life of the Greeks during the Turkish occupation come together. Of particular note in the church are the despotic icon of Christ the Almighty, which was crafted in 1912 by a monk from Mount Athos, Nikiforos. The marble relief candle holder with plant motifs bears a dedicatory inscription and dates from 1757. In 1839, in the center of the old city, the church of Timios Prodromos, an imposing three-aisled basilica, today's metropolitan church of Xanthi, 
is built on the ruins of a church destroyed by fire shortly before 1809. Worthy of note is the epitaph of the memory of the Metropolitan of Vienus. The Belfry, built in 1924, which has neoclassical and neo-Byzantine features. Outpourings of grief in wall paintings with depictions of martyrs of the 19th and 20th centuries. The church of Akathistos Imnos, built in 1861 in the district of Uzun Sokakios, that is, in the Long District, by the Metropolitan Dionysios on the ruins of another church. The miraculous household icon of the Virgin Theotokos Odiitria most likely dates back to the 16th century with paintings over the original done in the 18th century. The paved courtyard with the monastic entrance. Here in the old city of Xanthi, after seeing the beautiful churches, the visitor will be impressed by the picturesque private chapels that adorn many of the courtyards of the aristocratic houses. In this blessed place, the faithful coexist in harmony, respecting each other's religion. Thus, Beside the church rises a minaret, and often the ringing of the bell accompanies the voice of the muezzin. In the district, which was once called Akhrian Mahalesi, is the Akhrian Mosque, where the Muslims of Tsanthi pray. The decoration is plain, without icons. Only holy texts with excerpts from the Koran. A journey in time, the old city of Xanthi, set in the past, but living the present. The heart of the tale, once upon a time, was a city, is the city, the one and only, which knows how to give to both its inhabitants and visitors, who come from far and wide, the joy of merrymaking. Each year, at the end of the summer, for about 10 days, the city celebrates, makes merry to the rhythm of the old city festivities. The narrow streets are alive with people. Fun, song, dance, music. In every corner, open-air barbecues, makeshift tavernas, wine flows with abundance. On these special days, the Xanthian cultural associations work all year round to offer to everyone the abundant hospitality of Xanthi's hard-working inhabitants. <laughs> They 
quite eminent artists established in the field of music and the performing arts. Great names from Greece and the world over honor the festivities with their presence and talent. <laughs> give concerts in the squares to entertain people. Wherever you turn, you will be under their spell. Book exhibitions, painting exhibitions, famous artists. The eye is sated, the senses fulfilled, the emotions fill with color. Everything is alive with unexpected happenings. Visual arts, theater, dance, music, an amazing feast which revives memories and shares the stuff of memory. What happens here is unmatched anywhere else in our country. Thousands of people each evening join together in one group. The wine stirs the spirit, the music and song the body. The buzuki, the guitar, the mandolin, the accordion strive to harmonize with the lyre of Orpheus. People who have met for the first time yesterday dance in each other's arms, let themselves go, make merry. Each 
Each year, at the end of the summer, the festivities of the old city are here waiting to dispatch a general invitation to all those who want to live a fairy tale. at a different kind of party, a party of memories and culture, which only the old city of Xanthi knows how to give. Here then, in the city of a thousand colors, the old mansions with the Sacnicia, the balconies with the ornate railings, the fragrance of the Basmas, the monasteries and the churches, the whole town one picture, an open-air museum, a paved road, a thread of silk, which joins yesterday with today in a harmonious bond like a fairy tale. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful city where everyone is happy, and those who visit it, even happier.